which is good evening. It's good to see you and welcome friends to IFLA, uh, which is in Baragam, which is the traditional language of the community that I grew up on the Darling Downs in Queensland, Australia. So a very long way from The Hague in the Netherlands. Uh, um, my name is Vicky McDonald, and it is my great privilege to be the IFLA president for 2023 to 2025. And on behalf of my colleagues of the governing board and the IFLA staff, I welcome you this evening and thank you for making the time to join us this evening. Um, I would also like to extend a very warm welcome to our special guests, the ambassadors of Argentina, Australia, Canada and Oman. And we really appreciate you making the time to be with us this evening. Um, the governing board has been meeting across the last three days and we thought it was the perfect opportunity to bring together our friends and our colleagues and our supporters and of course the diplomatic community. So I thank each of you for coming. We also, as I mentioned, we have the governing board meeting across the last three days and then tomorrow we have the regional council, which of course means that we have many members of our regional council here as well. So thank you as well for coming. My presidential theme, so each IFLA president has the opportunity to choose a theme, and my theme is Stronger Together. So connections are very much at the heart of the work that I'd like to progress over the next um, two years of my presidency. So earlier today, I shared with our membership and volunteers the work that the Governing Board and the IFLA team has achieved over the last 100 days, and that's the first 100 days of this current governing board. And in that message, I referred back to the commitments that I made at the World Library and Information Congress in Rotterdam in August, and perhaps some of you were there. So based on that email, I'd like to just briefly update you on some of the achievements and the work that we have been doing. So at that time, I promised that we would look at our partnerships for financial sustainability. And to achieve that, We've commissioned initial research, which is looking at which development funders are already supporting libraries. And we will be publishing this to benefit libraries everywhere. We're also working together with our uh, strategic funding partners, Sigil, and certainly have had meetings with them across the last few days as well. We also promised to update our Congress model, and we know that the Congress is very important to our members. To achieve that, we have already updated the terms of reference for the 2025 Congress, and we've also established a process for an inclusive review of the Willick model as well, which would uh, come in as from 2026 onwards. We also promised to evaluate our governance structure. So to achieve that, we've launched a survey that is gathering feedback on the experiences around the nomination process and um, if the colleagues would know about the nomination process, which can at times be a little bit complex and, and hard to navigate. So it's been fantastic to already get some commentary from our colleagues as well. And what we will also do is put in place a process to review our committees as well. We often talk about being the global voice of libraries. So what we talked about was that we really need to ensure that we're earning the privilege to be saying that we are the global voice of libraries. So to address that, we've uh, placed outreach and engagement at the heart of our work with our regional units, as well as holding two in-person workshops and one regional division committee meeting. So I was really excited that I had the opportunity in October to visit Nairobi uh, and attend the Sub-Sahara Regional Workshop, which was a fantastic opportunity to meet so many colleagues as well. We also promised to develop a new IFLA strategy based on uh, the advice from our members as well. And of course, the IFLA strategy is really important because it guides the work of IFLA and the work of the IFLA team as well. So to address that, we have already completed four pulse surveys, which is gathering information about the way ahead and we've also published those results so everyone can see what everyone is saying. And these inputs have been considered at the governing board meeting in the last few days as well. And we'll certainly be continuing that work. We also promised to communicate more openly with our members. So to achieve that, we've been sending personal, member, um, 
personal messages to our members and volunteers explaining the key developments and the work that we're undertaking. So sharing critical information about the work that we're doing so that there is transparency in our communication. And we also promised to work together better as a governing board and engage our members. So we've been pushing forward on discussions around transparency, as well as working towards a draft code of conduct for volunteers. And just yesterday in our governing board meeting, we talked about transparency and what it means and how we can work to achieve it. So while ambitious, the list really does not do justice to all that is happening at IFLA. Right now, we have volunteers around the world working through our dozens of specialised committees to make connections, to share ideas, to <coughs> learn together and produce work that will benefit the broader community. We have colleagues from IFLA headquarters at COP28 in Dubai and at the International Telecommunications Union in Geneva. Both are working <coughs> hard to underline how libraries are a key partner for delivering policy goals. And tomorrow, as I mentioned, our regional council will meet, going from strength to strength in its work to build our presence and ability to react to needs at the regional level. And this is just a glimpse of the depth and breadth of the work that is, being take, is taking place across our federation. IFLA is 96 years old, and, um, and indeed on the agenda today, we've, and certainly over the last few months, we've been thinking ahead as to how we plan for our 100th birthday. So I do hope that I see some of you at our 100th birthday in a few years' time. Looking ahead though, the Governing Board is really uh, counting on the continued input from our members and volunteers. We're certainly very keen to hear the voices of everybody as we progress some of the work that I've just outlined as well. As you may know, um, that we're also undertaking the Willick Review as well as developing the IFLA strategy. And both of those key pieces of work will depend on hearing from everybody to hear what they would like to see in both of those pro as we progress as well. So we'll also be looking to extend further our work with government and other partners to, in order to ensure that libraries really realise their potential to deliver hope, resilience and positive change for people. And of course, I'm particularly excited about the meeting that we're planning for Australia in September, October. And I do hope to see all of you there as well. Um, and at that meeting, we plan to launch our IFLA strategy and also our trend report. So as you can see, there is so much happening and certainly progressing the really important work of IFLA. I'd like to extend special thanks to my colleagues on the IFLA Governing Board, the Stitch Team IFLA Global Foundation, SIGL, uh, they, as I said, they are a key partner and supporter of so much of the work that we do. To our members and to all our volunteers present who make our work possible, thank you very much. I know you can see many volunteers in the room. Also to our Dutch colleagues, it's terrific to see so many of you here this evening um, and also acknowledge the great conference that you hosted in Rotterdam just a few months ago. It certainly was a highlight for 2023. Also acknowledge Lily Nibbler and certainly the team at the KB who host us every day of the year. So thank you. It's good to have a, a roof over our head. Um, I also acknowledge my colleagues back at the State Library of Queensland. When someone is sitting in The Hague, there's always someone back home doing the work for you. So I acknowledge their work as well. I also particularly want to thank uh, Sharon Memmers, our Secretary General, and the IFLA team. They are a very small but mighty team, and I think I mentioned this in the Rotterdam as well. It's extraordinary the work that they are doing, and I certainly applaud that as well and acknowledge that as well. And I think they need absolutely. Uh, so um, I'd like to thank all of you for supporting the work of IFLA which in turn is leading to significant work occurring across the globe. And that really ensures that all communities have access to very vital and relevant library services, which has such an impact on the lives of all. So I particularly thank each of you, because I know that you all contribute to that achievement as well. And in closing, I'd like to thank all of you for coming, but also wish you and your families the best for the holiday season and certainly look forward to working with you more and again in 2024.
So you'll be pleased to know that that concludes the speeches for the evening. Um, but certainly I invite you to talk with the IFLA team, the governing board, and to enjoy our hospitalities. And thank you again for coming and joining with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.